Hi, I'm Kerry. Uh, I'm the host of Best of Us Investors. Uh, I'm a long-term investor. My biggest holdings are what I call my big six, and that's Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Tesla. That represents 50% of my portfolio because I'm, I'm investing for the long term. I don't need this money today. Uh, it's something in the future. So I'm okay with that. The other part of my portfolio is what I call my exponential growth opportunities. I operate on the premise that uh, the stock market for the long term reacts to events. Um, and and the, by events, I mean the first event that happened in my lifetime was World War II. The biggest event up until recently in my lifetime, I guess, would be World War II, but then the digital revolution. And that brought us the social media revolution, the e-commerce revolution, and, and it changed the way we live. Uh, I believe the coronavirus is going to change the way we live, basically in two, two categories, two, two elements. And that is our healthcare system and our, our, our supply chain. We have uh, broken both of them. Uh, otherwise, if, we, if our healthcare system had been working up to par, we would have recognized this virus before it took hold and created the havoc that it is. That's another issue. The other issue was, uh, it brought to the forefront that we had gotten out of the manufacturing business. We made a decision back in the early 90s, late um, 80s, that we didn't want to pay high prices for everything um, and, and employ Americans. We wanted cheap prices and employ, employ Asians. And that was a conscious decision that our world made. And so furniture's not made here, clothing's not made here, uh, few automobiles are made here, few semiconductors are made, not made here. Everything's made in Asia. And that was kind of okay until we said, wait a second, this is a national security issue. We need to bring manufacturing back. Well, again, the reason we, it went away was labor. But there are two things that are now on the forefront that make it possible to bring manufacturing back to the United States. And so that's the other area I'm investing in, and that's 3D printing, and the other possibility is robotics. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to review the stocks that I bought, and some of you who have followed me may have bought, and give you my perspective on them now, and let's just do an update. First of all, uh, if this is helpful to you, uh, subscribe, uh, give me a like, uh, that's the thumbs up, and ring the bell. This helps uh, my algorithm, helps Google determine that, hey, people like Kerry's videos, and we need to put them in front of more people that may benefit from his experience. So I'll be right back. Just got to share with you. I'm not your financial advisor. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Three D printing and robotics. I don't. I can't get a handle on robotics. Um, I, it just seems to be something that is diverse, and I don't see who the small company is who's going to take the leadership in that area. I don't see that though in three D printing. I've basically focused on three companies in two segments of 3D printing. The first one, which I'm up, uh, it looks like 68% on currently, is uh, DDD, that's 3D Systems. They have basically decided they are going to focus their business right now on the medical field. And that is to say, such as my dentist, last time I went to have my teeth cleaned, I could hear a grinding sound. And I asked the hygienist, what is that? And she says, that's our 3D printer. We're printing um, dentures and crowns and not sourcing them out anymore. Huh, that's interesting. Um, and I've, I've also talked to doctors, and they're doing the same thing in their clinics for orthopedics. Because what they recognize is when, when, you, break, when you have to have your knee replacement done, your knee is different than my knee. So there's no going to the shelf and getting a knee. Or an, uh, or an elbow or a shoulder or anything like that. No, it, everyone is individual. So if they, they come together, they can buy the 3D printers that give them 
uh, the production as they need it, and they don't have to outsource it. So um, DDD has done quite well, and that explains why I'm up 60 percent. On the other side of the picture, though, is mass production. These are the people who are going after the car companies, after the, after the refrigerator companies, after appliances, whatever, even furniture, and saying uh, they, they, they need those parts and they can be made more effectively, more efficiently and cheaper through 3D printing and not involve labor, which will present the opportunity for bringing uh, the supply chain back to the United States. Well, why hasn't that happened as fast as my dentists and the orth orthopedic surgeons? Well, in order to, to, for the dentist to do it, all he's got to do is cancel his orders with, um, with whoever his supplier was, and then have the machine brought into his, his, um, his, his office and learn how to run it and run it, so just like that printer over there. Uh, there's a learning curve, but once you learn it, you, it works. And so I don't have to go to Kinko or Office Depot to get my printing done, okay? Same in the dentist. It's not that way for a car company. It's not that way for Ford or BMW that says, yeah, uh, desktop metals, we want your system, send it, and we'll just get rid of everything we don't. It doesn't happen that fast. Um, they got to build a facility. They've got to train somebody to run the system. They got to install the software. It's a major event. And so it takes time to gear up. It also takes time for desktop metals to sell them on it. So it, it hasn't had the surge up. And in fact, there's been a lot of people who are disappointed because of that. And thus the stock is down right now. And Desktop metals, let's see, I'm down uh, 32%. Uh, the other one is X1. Uh, and in fact, it was announced recently that uh, desktop metals and X1 are going to merge and become one and become the dominant force in mass production of 3D, 3D metals, metals. So I'm comfortable owning that. Uh, what I then wanted to do is share with you how I appease myself, okay? Uh, and I do that by, by doing a chart and showing where the two are, where I started, where the two are, and where I think it's going based upon the knowledge that I have, the reading that I do, and the research that I do. So let me share my charts with you and give you an insight as to how I look at it uh, on a graph. This is my full disclosure, if you will, chart on my 3D printing stocks. There are three of them, uh, 3D Systems, Desktop Metals, and X1. I actually bought them all about the same time, uh, around January the 4th, I believe it was, of 2021. I was convinced, as I've said earlier, that uh, our blockchain being broken, that 3D printing was going to be a major contributor in bringing um, manufacturing back to the United States and almost a necessity. So I dumped in all three, not really having a knowledge of how to, uh, to distinguish one from the other, but I've come to learn that DD Systems is uh, more in the medical field and X1 and desktop are in the mass production. Both of them have eyes on the uh, automobile industry and in fact desktop metals and X1 are merging somewhere in the near future. Now you can see as if if all I had bought of uh, DDD uh, was on on the 1st of January I would be up 176 percent but I actually bought more of it as it was going up and thus my net gain at this point is 66%. I did the same thing with X1 and, uh, and desktop metals. I'm down 34% on desktop metals. I'm up 6% on X1. So that brings us up to to date. What about the future? Well, I believe that 
uh, DDD, 3D systems, being in the medical field, will benefit from the medical revolution that I believe is going to happen over the next uh, 12 months and become more top of mind. I do, I think this is the end of desktop metals, or excuse me, uh, 3D, no, I think it's it's got a bright future in front of it as more and more uh, applications are found within the medical field for, desk, for 3D systems. I also suspect they'll branch out from the medical field. They're, they're concentrating right now on orthopedics and dental and things of that nature. Where I think the real potential is, is down here with three uh, with desktop metals. These two will become one. I think over the next year, they will basically come back to where I'll be close to even or maybe up. Well, I guess it would be, this would put me up about 32%, or in other words, make up my loss plus gain 34%. I then think into the future, and I, I, this is not accurate at 23, I just, at uh, January of 23, I think this, the future of this will, will skyrocket as our manufacturing systems, and this will take time, this will take time, but I believe this is the real potential in 3D printing as we make it a part of our manufacturing system. I think it's evident that we're going to make robotics a part of our manufacturing uh, industry, and I think 3D printing, as they expand their uses, and as I say, desktop metals and X1 are in the mass production. So that's, that's where I am on these 3D printing stocks and where I think it's going. Again, I invest in the future. I don't get hung up on what exactly is happening uh, today, but I do look to the future, and I believe I have a very bright future in 3D printing. Okay, I'm doing this more and more with, with all the, the stocks that I own. As I said, uh, I did a video just recently on my retirement channel about how a 15-year-old can create a plan and to become a millionaire when they're 50 and retire early, but he has to have he has to have the goal, and then he has to have a plan, and then he has to way to have a way to chart that plan to see if he's staying on course or deal with any situations that present themselves. And that's what these charts do for me. What I also do, and I'll share with you at some later time, is I transfer these numbers to an Excel spreadsheet. So numerically, I can project out as well that if this happens, this is what I project will happen. And on a regular basis, roughly monthly, I can go to it and say, okay, this is what's changed. And this is how the picture has changed accordingly. That gives me uh, more than just a YouTuber to give me confidence that I'm on the right channel. And so that's how I run my portfolio. Again, I want to reemphasize that 50% of what I have is in the big six. These um, 3D printing probably represents about five to 6% of my portfolio. And the other area that biotech runs are probably about 15%. So that's how I kind of run. And then everything else is just kind of auxiliary. That's how I run my portfolio and why I'm comfortable being down 32.46 uh, 32, 32 as we speak on um, desktop metals. I hope that helps you. That's my objective is to share my knowledge, share my experience. I'm a retired financial advisor. I sold one of the largest Ameriprise uh, franchises back in 05. And um, for reasons we can talk about later, it's real important to me that I help other people make good investment decisions, understand how to keep more of what you make by understanding our tax code. I do a lot of that over on my other channel, uh, Best of Us in Retirement, and then building family wealth. I, I just believe that if the government says that Nita and I can pass on $24 million without any estate taxes attached to it, 
why not set that as a goal and work on a daily basis to make it happen? Okay, again, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. This is Best of Us Investors. If you want to learn more about us, go to bestofusinvestors.com, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be talking to you again probably tomorrow. Tomorrow.